Hi, I'm Aaron Hill, Captain of Team Tantrum, competing on BattleBots on the Discovery and Science channels. I'm here to talk to you some about one of the unique mechanisms inside of our robot, Tantrum. It's referred to as a choo-choo, and it's being used to actually wind down and store energy in a large titanium spring. At full pull-down, Tantrum's spring is actually good for around 12,800 pounds at the tip. So the mechanism required to actually pull this down has to be very robust and controlled. This mechanism originated in middle school when I was playing with Legos, competing against a friend of mine, building Lego BattleBots actually. So the weapon it was applied to then was actually a large hammer that it would pick up and hold in place and drop whenever required. The mechanism also just happened to have enough parallels to the challenges I was facing designing this robot for BattleBots. Tantrum's weapon consists of a very large titanium spring that's the entire top of the robot. The, what you see in pictures, the top of that is not armor necessarily, that is the actual spring that stores all the energy. So that is three pieces of 10 millimeter thick titanium plate, and the front pull point where the choo-choo actually pulls down on this to, actually, to load it <clears throat> moves approximately four and a half inches, which is somewhat terrifying to watch in person, and then gets held down and the flipper tip goes under an opponent and we let go precisely when we want to. The choo-choo actually lets us perform this action and store the energy in that titanium and hold and control it, control release what, exactly when we want it in a very compact fashion. Another advantage of the choo-choo is it allows me to use an electric motor to power the launcher mechanism as opposed to a high pressure air system with cylinders which takes up a lot more volume inside the robot. By using batteries the robot is allowed to be very very small and very very well armored. So I have in front of me half of Tantrum's chassis which is composed of two large billets of aluminum. So we're actually looking split down the middle at the central central plane of the robot. So this is where all the choo-choo happens. There's a main pivot here that part one of the choo-choo goes on, the actual main choo-choo disc, which has a very large bearing and there's also an encoder right in the middle that lets us know rotationally where the choo-choo is at. This is important for the control system of the robot to be able to automatically load and fire when we tell it to. So, several features on the choo-choo disc are essentially the main pivot pin for the link and the stop, which we have colored blue. <clears throat> and then the second feature that comes onto here is actually the first link. So, in its most basic factor, there's a choo-choo disc, first link, and then there's a second link. In this case, it's a very flexible chain. which this is actually chained out of a forklift essentially. So this chain is good for approximately 26,000 pounds before it has any issues. So this chain would continue from the choo-choo up and around this pulley at the front, which freely spins, and attach to the spring, which is above the robot. So the basic mechanism here is actually really, really simple. The motor back here spins this assembly and winds back the first link, and this is the halfway rotation point, so the choo-choo is now rotated 180 degrees. So this now hits the stop. So as you continue past, it pulls it back another 180 degrees. So this, this point in the link has actually moved from here to here. And that is the total stroke of this mechanism. That's how far it can pull something and hold it in the loaded position and then release. So the operation of this is actually fairly simple. There is the choo-choo main disc, the first link, and a second link, in this case formed with a large piece of leaf chain, which goes like this, and then the end of this actually goes up to a pin on the spring itself. So if you can imagine, when you rotate this, you start pulling the chain in. So the first 180 degrees of motion pulls it back, essentially the diameter where this pin is located relative to that pivot. This is another <clears throat> over center configuration where if I pull as hard as I want there's zero torque on the actual choo-choo disc. And then when you keep rotating, since this pin is also off center from the main pivot, you start pulling back even farther. And this finishes and completes your rotation before you get to the fully loaded position. And <clears throat> for this position, the chain is just to the side of this pin. And the motor is holding there and there's very little torque actually being applied to that disc. So then when you push the fire button, all that happens is it rotates just a little bit farther and this entire assembly swings free. And the weapon is fired. And then you are free to just 
do one more rotation and you are fully loaded again. This mechanism does actually tend to produce some funny requirements from a motor perspective because you notice it essentially has two stages, the first 180 degrees and the second 180 degrees. So if I were to do a real quick graph of position and that's 0 to 360 versus uh, torque that the system sees, it starts at 0 because everything is in line. So I start down here and then you go to the 90 degree mark. So that's actually quite high. And then this starts approaching center again. So that actually goes all the way back to zero. And you're at a zero point there. And then as you keep rotating, once you get to 90 again, you're right back up top. And then you continue all the way back to the loaded position. And you're back to zero. And effectively, the motors hold it right before this point for perfectly over center. And then when you fire, it simply returns back to the beginning of this loop. There's some fun geometry actually happening here that is more just an optimization, not necessarily required for functionality. If I were to have this link reach the same distance from the center of the large pivot as this pin is, my graph would look a lot more like this due to how the spring constant of the, of the spring force pulling down actually works. And this is required a little torque in the first half and a lot more torque in the second half. So in order to minimize the height of the second peak, the second pivot is actually much closer to the center of the main pivot. So as many of you know, one of the largest concerns of BattleBots is actually maintaining safety of all the participants and the audience members. The situation with which this mechanism goes from high force to zero to high force to zero means there's a spot in the middle right here where the mechanism, if it were to fail, can actually get stuck. And I would have zero control over running it backwards. So this can happen under communication failure, it can happen under sensor failure. So if the sensor were to fail, we had to come up with a fail-safe plan such that if we ever lost communication with the robot, had radio problems, etc., that it would unload itself. The easiest way to unlo unload this in a controlled fashion is simply to run the mechanism backwards and slowly let out the assembly until you're at zero force again. And a downside to the choo-choo system is it's very hard to modify the amount of force you have. You have a fixed amount of pull and you're hook attaching that to a spring that has a fixed amount of energy it can store. So if we wanted to change how much energy we're actually storing, our only real variable to tweak there is the length of the chain itself going up to the spring. This meant there would be a lot of slack in the spring until we start pulling. And then <clears throat> once you start pulling, you'll pull the slack out and then pull down some set distance. The one downside of the choo-choo mechanism is this mechanism has a fixed length of pull. In this case, it's four and three quarters of an inch from here to here. So in this case, to modify the amount of weapon power we have, the only way to modify that is to actually change the length of this chain because in order to not store as much energy, we need to just not pull the spring down as far. So if we make this chain longer, we don't pull the spring down as far. But that also introduces a lot of slack in the chain. So with this over center point where the mechanism can get locked, we were forced to put in some safety features such that if we ever lost communication, it would actually run the mechanism backwards. So if I have this attached to the spring and start running this mechanism backwards and there's slack in the system, you'll notice that the stop actually hits the swing arm and starts pushing it out the bottom. And in this case, it is not designed to ever be operating in this point. And this part of the mechanism is actually poking into the floor right now and would be lifting up the wheels. And that's really bad. Thank you for joining me to learn about some of the nifty things inside Tantrum. Keep an eye out for some additional videos with regards to some of the other technology we have going on. And thanks for watching. Hi everyone, my name is Ginger, social media manager on Team Tantrum. Hi, and I'm Sean, Team Dad. Remember, subscribe below. You can also find us on Instagram and Facebook. Our handle is at tantrum.battlebot. Thanks for watching. Thank you. And keep watching the show.